crappy spoons don't do. I need to get out my good. No, I'll wait till next winter. I want to get in that shed out there and pull out my good silverware I bought years ago. And I never got in there and got it out. Uh. And then I started buying. Well, I bought some stuff. They had it on sale over at Macy's one time. And I think that's what I have. No, I bought it at a yard sale that Grandma Lickenhan had. I think that was it years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really long time ago. So I'm, you know, me, I'm always the, trying to get involved in uh, politics and seeing what's going on. I'm really interested in uh, Yeah. Yep. Keep going back and forth. Yeah. It's at 73. What, what do you make of it? Uh, thanks for having me, Jessica. Look, the Israeli Jordanian border is arguably the longest and least defensible of Israel's borders. Uh, relations between uh, the Ashamite Kingdom and the Netanyahu government uh, have been cool and chilly, to say the least. But there's very intimate and intensive security cooperation between Jordanian intelligence. And so that border is generally quiet. Yeah. Um, at three critical crossing points in the north, the Avami crossing point, and then near uh, Aqaba and Elad is the third one. Um, it's generally extremely quiet, uh, but occasionally, I think the last incident was in 2016, other uh, incidents. Um, clearly, uh, Gaza has affected the Jordanian. Population, the majority of which are Palestinian, greatly Jordanians are gearing up for um, parliamentary elections this month, at least the first phase of them. Um, Jordanians appear to believe, and the Israelis confirm that this is a, a lone gunman, although it's interesting to note, Palestine is part of Jihad, a small Palestinian terror organization, um, which is all, all but wholly owned subsidiary of Iran, uh, came out to praise the operation. And the Iranians have been trying to funnel weapons, uh, specifically IEDs, over the Jordanian border uh, to Palestinian groups in the West Bank. So I, I guess, um, in, in a way, it's starting that this was the first incident since October 7. Um, hopefully, there won't be many more. And the Alamein Bridge crossing that, that mostly be, serves um, the, you know, like, three million Palestinians. Uh, how might this, might this closure impact them? No wonder I can't read it, huh? Well, I mean, that's, I guess, one of the ironies here, right? I mean, that presumably this individual undertook something in defense of the Palestinian cause and that delay and closure of that They've border been fighting over there for so many a key route for the distribution uh, yeah. and delivery of um, I remember talking about the West Jordanian Bank when I was in high school. Commercial goods to the West Bank. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Uh, the Alamein Crossing is also being used oh, yeah. as a... Um, <laughs> As a point to deliver humanitarian assistance to uh, to Gaza, the West Bank is pretty sealed up. The Israelis have essentially not permitted Palestinian workers. Um, they are withholding transfers, monetary payments. So the situ economic situation on the West Bank is really <laughs> not exactly the West Bank. It's only it's upside down. It's upside down. down. And, and as you and I are talking, um, for months now, the U.S. has been leading a coalition to try to get these ceasefire and hostage uh, talks to an actual deal and closing well, a deal. Was, it was well, interesting that we heard from and, um, the CIA director, uh, Bill Burns, over the World weekend. World II, and, and his assessment of getting a deal done was essentially, he said, country. it comes down to political will and leadership on both sides, and both sides being time. willing to recognize enough is enough, essentially went on to say, time to make tough decisions. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, absolutely. You know, Bill was a former U.S. ambassador to Jordan and knows the region extremely well, and there's no question. You, you and I have been talking for months now about the absence of urgency. Did they have a tomorrow holiday? Do you think some negotiations like these close? I don't know. Almost always. Because the parties it's believe that the advantages of doing a deal are not completely done. Today is Sunday, September. Yeah, that's Simoir and Benjamin Netanyahu. I, I once now have not seen the kind of urgency that is required 
to deal with some of these sensitive issues. I'm absolutely persuaded that every issue under negotiation could be tractable, could be resolved, as Bill, CI Director Burns said, if there were political will on the part of St. Martin to end it to now, and there's not. It's Lee's administration, frankly, with uh, very bad options. I mean, rescue operations with American special ops are, are fraught, as the Israelis discovered. With this discovery, the body, the bodies of the six um, over the last four or five days, uh, opening a separate channel to Hamas to negotiate for the return of American hostages, I could see how that could play um, wildly for Hamas's public relations. Okay? But I don't think the administration would want to be put in that position. So it really does leave Saudi um, a negotiation. Uh, and the only way, not just to react, as you, you've seen in November on the 105 last year, or at least but to begin to de-escalate the war, at least for phase one, maybe six, six weeks. I don't think the administration, Jessica, can just give up, um, take their proposals and go home. I suspect they'll continue to try. But the headlines are bad here, Jessica, and the trend lines look even worse for me. All right, Aaron David Miller. Uh, always good to get your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. I had new reporting from both inside from inside both the Harris and Trump campaigns about the last minute preparations each candidate is taking as they get ready for Tuesday's consequential debate. Thank you. Two days away. And we are following breaking news out of Kentucky where police have been searching the woods for the suspect in last night's highway shooting. You're in the CNN newsroom. The UPS store is more than just a shipping store. We're the packet, ship it, guarantee it store. We know running a small business takes a lot of grit and hustle. So we're the stress less store. And the we got your back store. Because when you trust us to pack it and ship it, we guarantee it. So it'll get into the hands of your customer safety. Which is why we're the standby work guaranteed store. Come into the UPS store today and be unstoppable. Carvana. <laughs> I just entered my license plate and answered a few questions. Bam! I'm dropping it off and getting paid today. How convenient is that? Thanks for choosing Carvana. Sell your car today and get paid the same day with Carvana. What the biggest companies deliver is exceptional customer experience. What makes it possible is unmatched connectivity and 5G solutions from T-Mobile for Business. T-Mobile connects 100,000 Delta Airlines employees. Powers tractor supply stores nationwide with reliable 5G business internet and helps Red Bull revolutionize coverage of live events. This is how business goes further with T-Mobile for Business. For a limited time, Subway just dropped the price of every foot long in the app to $6.99. Wait, Subway did what? $6.99 foot long? Yep, says right here, $6.99 for any foot long. Get this deal in the Subway app now before it's too late. How far would you go to set the ambiance of your space? Try the Airwick way with Airwick Essential Mist. Infused with natural essential oils to fill your moment with immersive fragrance for up to 45 days. Now that's a breath of fresh Airwick. Why did we choose Safe Life? We're always working on a project while loading up our SUV. One extra push Is she and doing anything mm. wonderful? Or just being, just being Mona? She's always wonderful. I saw a dog today that might have been good for for Nova, but she doesn't like other girl dogs. No, oh, who is this? Somebody over at the uh, Humane Society? No. Uh -uh. Taryn. Oh, okay. Really? I don't know how they be so picky. I don't understand. Oh, 
over at um, okay the uh, the place that uh, they have it over in the shopping center now. Yeah. And what are their hours over there, John? They do a lot better in the morning. Eleven. They open up at eleven. Yeah. And what time do they close, John? Three. And what kind of dog was it? Pitbull. Oh. She's not a pitbull. She's a mastiff. So I think she'd be better off with a mastiff. They have massive crosses over there. Yeah. Yeah, she was really well trained. When I got her, she was um, I think a chihuahua would be appropriate, John. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is for um, Mexican papers. Looks like I think we have um, one of the kids who's over at uh, what's it, Pima, Pima, what's it called? Pima Animal Shelter. Pima, no, Pima County. Is it Pima County? What's it listed? How is it listed, huh? Main Society of Southern Arizona. Okay. Parker Road, 